Hi everybody and welcome to the Toronto Real Estate Show with Janelle and Leslie. I'm Janelle Cameron. Hi there, I'm Leslie Pearson. And today we're going to talk about one of our favorite topics and discuss six real estate mistakes. Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you had a great summer and we are back after a little hiatus. Wasn't too long. Yeah, just the month of August. The month of August. We usually do that um, because life grinds to a halt in August yeah. around here. It does. Um, anyway, people aren't interested in particularly in talking about real estate and they have their minds on sun and cottaging and yep. fun around the city. So so we took a well needed break. Mm -hmm. But we're back with mm -hmm. vengeance. Well, it's something. <laughs> <laughs> back with some. Yeah, we are excited, I think, about the fall market. And what may come uh, today is September the fourth. So no third. Third. So tomorrow there's an interest rate announcement. And unfortunately, we're recording this before we have kind of any news about that. But um, I'm anxious to see what's going to happen. It does sound like there will be uh, some cuts. Yeah, I mean, unanimous, unanimously, that's what I'm hearing. Uh -huh. I'm not hearing anybody say it'll stay the same or go up. Yeah. So I would be stunned if it did, if that many people could be wrong. Me but too. you never know. You never know. By the time this is out, this episode, then um, you, know, you will know the answer to that. So we'll yeah. be, um, And by the way, before we go any further, if I can just take a second to remind all of you to please subscribe. Uh, wherever you are listening to this, it's really helpful for us to actually have subscribers as opposed to just uh, listening, although we love that you've listened as well. Um, so if you don't mind doing that, that would be great. We'd appreciate it. But at the same time, um, you know, ask any questions that you like, um, the things that you want to know if our new season now or ready to address whatever people want to know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so back to what we're talking about. Interest rates, that's obviously what people want to know, and we'll have an answer for that. We'll also have the stats coming out tomorrow, so that will be in next week's episode. Uh, we will be delving into all of that, and... Um, so we'll, next week we'll have you know, much more data. Yeah. Um, but now we've, uh, we've told you what we think will happen with interest rates. What do you think the, um, the stats are going to show? What's your suspicion? I, in my own life, I have a little bit of a pickup in activity and things in August. Um, I think it was better than July. Definitely. Yeah. Um, people mm -hmm. seem, it seemed to me like the buyers that were out were more motivated to buy. Right. As opposed to what we've seen for the last, you know, yeah. year where people are just tire kicking. It did seem to me like people that were actually out were thinking about doing something, so that was good. Yeah. Um, so I noticed that. I would also say that, um, you know, things went off, a lot of things went off the market, so that was good. But the things left behind, I was able to sell a lot of things that we could, had that were kind of kicking around. Yeah. You know, with the exception of one. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, it surprised me a bit because I, you know, the common thinking was that um, people, buyers were waiting for another interest rate announcement and greater reductions before mm -hmm. making a move. So, but it, so it kind of felt though that, you know, some decided not to wait. Some yeah. realized that the time to buy was before that ha happened and everybody else jumped on the bandwagon. Yeah. I think that's what it was, is the smart buyers who were always going to buy. Yeah and realized, oh my gosh, the first week of September, a lot more people are gonna be comfortable. And this is, again, anticipating um, an interest rate reduction. But, um, you know, I, I kind of took the month of August off, uh, so I haven't been as involved as you, but, uh, you know, what you describe is, is kind of what I read about and hear about. And yeah, I think you're right. It was, it was a, even it, in... Um, it was a bit busier than July. I even did a commercial lease, and we were in multiples. Mm -hmm. So even that seemed like the good, and this was a type of property that maybe is hard to find, so people were ready to jump on it. So mm -hmm. I, I took that all as the, yeah. a good sign. The one thing, so again, just anecdotally, the one um, you know experience contradictory to that is, and you know, correct me, and the, you'll correct me if I'm wrong here, but um, I think that rentals might have gone they down. They went down. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Did, mm -hmm. Do you know that? Yes, they did. I'm yeah. not sure what the percentage was. Yeah. But, 
I certainly heard about that. Now, I mean, it doesn't, it's not surprising. It makes sense if you think about it. We've got all these investors right now, especially in condos, trying to sell. They're, they're not selling. They're desperate to at least get some income coming in, and so maybe they rent for a little less. Than right, they so they're, trying, they're listing them both for sale and rent, maybe, yeah. and they take what they get. Yeah, and I was doing a, this was interesting, I was um, helping a, a former client of mine lease something recently, and everywhere we looked, the place was for sale and for yeah. rent. Yeah, that's and what I think is, it's happened. I think that's always happened, but lately, really, because yeah. people are really having a hard time selling, that I think there's more of that. I think so. And, and so was, then they just take what comes first. Yeah, and that's hard because when you have a client that wants to stay there for a while, trying to, you know, encourage them to lease something that is probably going to go up for sale next year is not the best either. That's so true. That's there's, lo there's lots of things to kind of think about. Yeah, that that's true. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm excited. I do have a feeling that it's going to be a decent fall, uh, not fall, I think September. And I yeah. think maybe two or three weeks of good. Yeah. Um, and then you think it's going to drop off? I think we'll have the same thing we had in March, two yeah. years in a row, where it was like super, super busy for a month and then nothing. Yeah. Um, so we'll see, but I've got uh, I've got some, you know, you can uh, we talked about this on the the show before, but you can almost start to feel a buzz, and I don't know how to describe that, but it's like a sense, and I'm definitely getting the sense, mm -hmm. like in over the last maybe week or two, mm -hmm. I'm starting to feel like okay, yeah, we. There's something is brewing. Yeah. The the problem is, I think we're going to see a lot of new listings out. Yes. Already today, I saw in the East End there were you know a ridiculous amount. So but given you know, what you kind of anticipate for the fall, would you recommend someone list now and be part of that number spike? I would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would do it probably for the next four to five weeks mm -hmm. and then see how it goes before yeah. saying any further. But yeah, I would. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. So I thought, you know, we would discuss maybe some seller and buyer mistakes, real estate mistakes in general today, because there's a lot of confusion out there. Mm -hmm. And maybe this can kind of um, help people address that because uh, people are not being successful in their sales or their buys, um, you know, just I think because there is so much confusion. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so let's talk about that. Okay, the number one thing I think we get um, asked for the most part right now is what kind of selling strategy should we have? Yeah, I mean, what's the market like and what's the strategy that will best suit this market? Because, you know, we have to acknowledge and we have that it's, you know, different than it's been for the, you know, since we've been in business. Mm -hmm. It's been different than it's been for the last 15 to 18 years. So. Um, you know, for the last several years in Toronto and the GTA generally, you could, you know, you look to any neighborhood and generally it was a strategy of set an offer date, make the property visible as much as possible and um, just really market it and expose it and uh, try and get more than one offer and offer date. Mm -hmm. So uh, people became accustomed to that strategy mm -hmm. and uh, it's hard when times change and that might not be the case but so what do you think so my answer to that is uh, it's, you're not going to like to hear the answer but is it it depends yeah uh, it depends on what you have for sale and where you have it for sale yeah so this could go horribly wrong if you don't get that piece this strategy right yeah yeah whatever strategy yeah um, if you're you know from a selling perspective yeah. because um, Let's just say, for argument's sake, you want to, you're in a decent neighborhood, it's a good property, and you want to list low and take offers, which, as we've talked about, is generally very effective. I think if you get that wrong, it could be a huge error. So by wrong, I mean... It doesn't work. Pricing, yes, or pricing it too high. Oh. For multiple offers, for example. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I know we always use the same kind of analogies but let's say for argument's sake you want you think the house is worth a million and you list at 949 that's a mistake that's too too high 
Yeah, if you're if you're buying into the strategy, you got to go all in. You got to go all in and do uh, you know a very low list price and take your chances, see how it goes. Yeah. Um, but what I would say to that is that uh, I don't know that I view it as an epic fail if you don't get uh, strong offers. I don't no. think there's any stigma. I don't think so either, but it can really backfire if, let's say your house is for sale, my house is for sale, and they're kind of the same house in the same neighborhood, and I list for $7.99 with an offer date, you list for $1.2 million, you know, it, it can really confuse people and then, yeah. you, and then you know, depending on which side of the fence you're on, it could be a mistake. This is not helping anyone. But the point being that I think you have to really look at each single house and experience and time independently, like you said, mm -hmm. and then make your decision mm -hmm. on what kind of strategy you want. Yeah. But as, as the strategy, I think, is what I'm trying to say is the, mis the mistake here is always listing too high anyway but listing too high if you want to have a multiple offer situation yeah and you know that that's a hard message for sellers to hear because if my house is worth you know one two and you're telling me to sell at 7.99 like um, you know I've had people say to me that that's embarrassing they would right. be embarrassed mm -hmm. if their neighbors knew that that's what they mm -hmm. were putting it out at and and people do believe there's a stigma with it not selling, and people do think at seventy ninety nine there's no chance we'll get one yeah. two. So that's a conversation. There's some obstacles there to overcome as a real estate agent. But you know, ultimately, regardless of the market that you find yourself in, whether it's hot like the last eighteen years or softer now, um, if you have something that shows really well, stands out in your community really, um, and uh, is marketed well, That I think that strategy can work any time, yeah. in any market. Yeah. Um, you, uh, I believe it's more important than ever to show your house in the most pos positive light mm -hmm. possible because you know, maybe not every house is selling and you want to be the one of choice. Yeah. Um, so I think regardless of the real estate market dynamics going on, that strategy can work with a highly coveted property. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's why my answer at the beginning was it depends. Yeah, no, you're If right. you have, you know, I think a lot of the problem with what we've seen over the last several months is there's nothing particularly interesting and appealing out there. So that's that strategy might not work in that situation. Yeah, that's I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a property like that, but you have to think about are people gonna fall over themselves right. to get yeah. your place? You have to think about that. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, but um, I agree with you. Your choices are always to pursue that strat strategy that we've really focused on, or price kind of low to fairly and not have an offer date, or price high. Uh, anticipating interest and uh, the ability to negotiate. I would say that last strategy, I would almost universally say no. Especially right now. Yeah. It's not working. So don't pri price high. Don't price too that's high. A, that's, that's a fail. Yeah. So, but um, I think, so I think your choices are the other two. Yeah. 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 And um, there are times for both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, okay, let's talk about the next kind of um, potential mistake from a buyer's perspective, and that is the whole concept of offering with conditions. Right. Do you right now, don't you right now, what's a person to do? Yeah, you know, you're gonna hate me again because my answer is it depends. It depends. Yeah, and you're right. If you have one of these properties we've just talked about, um, you know, that is going to, is priced right and marketed well, and shows great, and is in a great neighborhood, we've talked about all of this, if you have one of those, and you set an offer date, there's no way you're gonna be successful if you have a condition. Yeah. And um, I've seen a couple of those out already today. Good properties, you know they're gonna sell so way over asking. Yeah, they're not going to accept yeah. additional offers. They're not going, the thing is, people, they're not gonna to have to. Yeah. Because those properties are gonna be in such demand that they're not gonna to have to. Right. The key to being able to submit your offer with um, conditions is to offer on a property that isn't as, high demand coveted. Yeah. So might have been sitting on the market for a while. Yes. Might 
not show as well because we're a highly visual society and, and most people cannot fathom what a place could look like. Mm -hmm. um, so um, sitting on a while not looking is great and maybe even the factor we just talked about if the price is overpriced you know, there might be less competition for it. So in those situations, I think you can consider yes um, submitting an offer with conditions. But even then, I think there's some uh, restriction on the conditions that would be acceptable yes. to a seller. Yeah. And so I think a common one is finance. I think sellers if of those type of properties would understand and accept maybe a finance condition or um, status. Mm -hmm if it's a condo or home yeah. inspection, mm -hmm. if it's a house. But I'm finding, or I would think that, even if you have that kind of property to sell and you're accepting conditions, I don't think it, we're at the situation yet, maybe you feel differently, where you would a seller would accept a sale of buyer's property. I haven't seen any yet. No. It's, in, it's interesting because they've been floating around, but yeah. I, I haven't seen any more. So yeah, I don't yeah. think so. So I don't think though there are, so I think you, there are some situations when a condition would fly, but there's some conditions that won't fly. Yeah. And I think that's, that's one that comes to mind and I'm sure there's others. Yeah. Um, so I guess the point is buyers, if you're out there and you're thinking about offering on one of these properties, be smart. You know, yeah. listen to what your agent's telling you. Yeah. So no know the dynamics of what yeah. you're interested in. And then for sellers, if you're pursuing the strategy of listing low and setting an offer date, you have to go all in. And part of that, one thing element of that, is doing things so that you can attract firm offers to make it, you know, easy. Um, acceptable, easy yeah. for buyers who might be injured, mm -hmm. interested in your property. So that means doing, for example, a pre-listing home inspection. Yes, you more. can proceed. Um, pursue that property and not do that. No, we see that sometimes and it's wrong. Yeah, you absolutely yeah. can't. You have to make yeah. the property available mm -hmm. all the time. You have to accept that, um, you know, you have to choose your home inspector carefully so that it's someone that buyers yes. would accept yeah. Yeah, and respect. Yeah. So it's uh, on both sides, you have to uh, kind of play the game. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so what's another uh, potential mistake that I think we're seeing buyers and sellers make right now? And this is kind of similar to what we've been talking about, but that is making assumptions about what today's market is based on the past. So sellers are basing today's decisions on what happened two years ago. Buyers are basing their decisions on where they think things are, what they're hearing in the news. Yeah. And sometimes these are our total yeah. myths. So there's a natural gap there in, because of perspective. Um, if you're a seller, what I should do. If you're a buyer, um, you're going to read the neg negativity in the media and, you know, low ball. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that gap is greater now than ever before. Me too. It's a natural uh, psychological gap. And, uh, but the insistence by both parties, whatever side of the fence you're on, to hold on to this um, mm -hmm. ill-informed perspective is going to affect many offers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you're a seller, you absolutely should not be referencing what your neighbor sold for three years ago. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything anymore. Yeah. And you have to get over that because it's, not going to serve you. No. I mean, if you want to look to um, recent, you know, comparables kind of thing, you have to look at properties that are as similar to yours as possible um, and as recent Reason. as possible. So yeah. who cares? Like three years ago, I weighed 20 pounds less. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> right. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um, this is probably the number one thing I hear yeah. all the time is, well, you know, Joe and Mary sold uh, their place for two point three million, so yeah, so we should be able nice. to get that. Yeah, Good for Joe and Mary. Yeah, is your name Joe or Mary? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're Did you sell three years ago? Yeah. <laughs> the thing I hear the most is, well, we need this oh, amount, well, we need, or we yeah. put X amount into the house, yeah. and and let's make that mistake number four yeah okay is I think having an expectation of 
a dollar amount based on what you need. I cannot, this happens to me all the time. Well, I don't understand this. Yeah. What we need, I hear, I, I hear it almost daily. What we need because this is what we want to buy and what it costs. So we need this. Right. Well, why does a buyer care about that? Right. Or so, a foreign debt. So right. I need to pay off my debts, and in order to do that, I need to get right. this for the Why does the buyer care about that? Yeah. The buyer doesn't care about any of that. Yeah. Like, what you need to detach yourself from that as yeah. a seller. You need to understand that the market is the market. Yeah. It will pay you what it's worth. Yeah. And yeah. that's it. What you need, how much you put in. Yeah. Um, how that you know beautiful um, marble that you imported from Italy that cost you eighty thousand dollars. All Lovely. of that is irrelevant. That was your choice. Yeah, but you can't yeah. expect to get that out. And this is a, I think, a normal psychological kind of reaction as well. I mean, I, as a side, I've been I found a new app for buying used, um, largely furniture called Carrot. Right. It's similar to Facebook Marketplace. And almost every uh, article for sale that I read the listing about, it says, I bought for 500 Who cares? The yeah. moment you took it home, it oh, was I worth know. 75 Yeah, yeah. Who cares what you paid for it? <laughs> Isn't that unbelievable? Yeah and, yeah, and I, because I have some ridiculous need to set the record straight, tell people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah get that out of your listing, because who cares? Yeah. So... Um, it's irrelevant yeah. what Joe and Mary did three years ago. It's irrelevant um, if you over renovate it. Um, you know, yeah. so make your choices wisely when you do upgrade your yes. home because you can't expect buyers to pay for your over your indulgence. Yeah, that's a really yeah. big one, and I think yeah. that um, I think there's a misconception amongst certain neighborhoods or communities that they need to put this high-end material or this high-end kitchen or whatever the case may be in their property because that's what people are expecting in that community but it's actually unfortunately not the case mm -hmm. so people won't pay for that yeah you know only to a certain degree and then they, they yeah they just don't so uh, in that context don't overpay and don't also over particularize yeah. what you do you know you might like um I don't know purple, purple boards. Flower. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny we both like purple, but you know if you're thinking ever of reselling, it's not a wise decision. That's right. Purple yeah. purple doesn't sell. Yeah. Um, okay, here's another one I want to talk about because this is really this is really something that I've seen this year more than ever before, mm -hmm. and this is for sellers. Okay. If your place is on the market and you are not getting a lot of activity and you're waiting around and finally an offer comes in, you need to work with it. <laughs> so even if it's low or not what you wanted or has other things. It's an offer. It's an offer. Don't let so it die. Don't let it die. You will not serve yourself by sh shoving it away and saying, with an emotional yeah now it's not the time to be offended no there's no offense you no. got an offer you succeeded yeah, you got it work yes because that is our job is yeah. to get you an offer it's not you know we can't i can't make a buyer buy and i certainly can't make a buyer give a good offer but if you do get one you have to kind of try to work with it now no what you can do as a good real estate agent is help transform that offer. crappy offer yes. to one that is reasonable and that may not work right now no you know if someone comes in with an offer that happens to be three hundred thousand dollars under your asking price and maybe it will never get to where you want to be but you have to at least put the effort in and try it is a huge mistake to say no yeah and yeah. i've had you know this has been a challenging market obviously yeah. for sellers and uh, everybody knows that and i have had sellers turn offers away over the last year that they have never seen anything close to again. You're right. So the rule of thumb right. is your first one is usually your best one. And right. So if you say no to that one, the chances are the next one's not going to be as good. Right. And on top of that, I would just like to say, think about, I mean, I had, I had recently buyers turn down an offer that was $5,000. We negotiated. 
and it turned out to be five thousand dollars apart and the buyer could not pay anymore because of a mortgage you know whatever the sellers said no for five thousand dollars and guess what mm -hmm. it took months to sell mm -hmm. so yeah these are things that ego just, getting in the way ego. of it's logic. emotional mm -hmm. it's an emotional response it's yeah. not you know you have to remember it's a business yeah. you know yeah and down um, that's tough so yeah. when an offer comes in please try to work with it yeah do your best be realistic part of the problem i think that we are, are having in the city right now is that we've got so much inventory on the market sellers have not adjusted right. as a rule to the prices right. coming down no they haven't so they have refused to mm -hmm. sell the buyers have refused to buy, and it's this. This it's is a constant stalemate. problem. Yeah. yeah, it's a stalemate. Mm -hmm. It's the strangest thing I've ever mm -hmm. seen. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes. Yeah, so, if an offer comes in, work it. Work it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, another one I want to talk about for buyers is that, um, and we've talked about this a few times, but big mistake for you right now, if you are a buyer, is to not buy right now because you are waiting to see what happens with interest rates because. You have to understand when the prices, prices will go up as soon as the interest rates start to come down again. Prices are not going to stay like this forever. And so there's good opportunity for you right now. If you're serious about buying, do it now. Don't keep waiting and waiting for some yeah. magical number. You know, and we're gonna get we'll comments that we're biased and right. self-serving in saying this, but there's a lot of data that shows that you're potential savings waiting for an interest rate that you're comfortable with is nullified by the escalation in price yeah. sales so sale prices yeah. so it's a false economy um, yeah uh, you know uh, it doesn't make sense no and we just don't know what's going to happen out right. there right um, and I think you know there's no one out there that doesn't feel that prices will rise again right, right. Um, and so to wait in hopes that you get a you know, half a point reduction in interest rates when that could mean you're spending a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars more on the same property. Right. So the only person that would do that is someone who thinks prices are gonna go down. Way down. Yeah. Yeah. You know the category of people that I talk to that feel that way the most is bankers. Mm. I don't get it. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they haven't been right yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I had an argument almost about it on uh, last week. Uh, a very senior banker who was sure prices are going to go down, so it would be insane to buy now. Right. Where, where, on what basis do you say that? Yeah. There is none. We haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. We've seen uh, last month prices went down a half percent from last year. Mm -hmm. But then that's not really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we don't anticipate the, that being a trend. You know, who knows? I'm the first to say I don't know. Yeah, but we just haven't seen. I'm it not yet. as strong in him saying I know. Yeah, I'm um, strong enough to know that I don't know. Isn't the and same it has guy happened. said this like three years? There's a new guy I just met. Oh, okay. And but very senior in banking as well. Yeah, I don't get it. So, is it self-serving? Do they want people to put their money with them? I don't know. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. He also said to me, I probably shouldn't raise this here, just uh, he was very firm in saying there is no other investment. I didn't have a good comeback to this, mm. but it, he's wrong. But there's no other investment where the minute you get the keys, you've lost money. What's he talking about? Commission. Oh, big deal. Yeah. You've lost money for Commission what? Commission and land seconds? transfer tax. It's, you've immediately lost money. Yeah, for two yeah. seconds. Yeah. I didn't really get that. No, that guy's an anti mm -hmm. homeowner. He owns a lot of properties, but boats are different too. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, I digress. I, I yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we can only go on our experience and what we. Yeah. Was there anything else? No, um, that's all we had. Really. Your uh, screen went blank. Yeah. So we're done. But you know, we weren't following the path. No way. We like, never do. I know. I started. To, we started talking about one thing, and then I kind of switched yeah. over. Yeah. No, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, just, it's conversation that's... So next week we'll have full board stats. Next week we'll have, we'll have, uh, have interest rate news and we'll know what happened in August. Mm -hmm. And maybe that will help us make even firmer predictions yeah. for the rest of the fall. So. Um, but I, like you, I suspect there's going to be a real... Um, a little bit of chaos maybe in the next... Maybe till Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And then I think it will quiet mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So get your buying and selling in now, people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's it for today. Hopefully, uh, you're tuning in, and we're 
we're back. So yeah. we're all happy with that. Um, don't forget to follow us on all of our social channels at the Chanel Cameron team. But again, if you can subscribe to wherever you're listening to this and even give us a little rating, we really appreciate that, especially if it's a good rating. And uh, love to hear from you. So if you enjoy the content, you have things to say, you want to contribute, and we have a lot of listeners. We don't hear, we hear from some of them, we don't hear from as many as we'd like to hear yeah, from Yeah, that's the way to put it. So, <laughs> so we know you're there. there. Talk yeah. back to us, Talk please. back, yeah. Mm. It is a, kind of a weird thing talking into the void. Well, maybe that's good for us. I don't know. Mm. Like it. <laughs> anyway, everybody, thank you so much. Have a great week and happy real estate. Happy real estate, everyone.